Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the vertical timeline widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. This widget allows you to display events, happenings, milestones, or whatever you think of on a timeline that's set to align vertically. This is one example of the widget's use. In fact, the page we're on right now, this widget's page, contains several examples showcasing the vertical timeline's variations in style, layout, and manner of display. There is a wealth of options for you to choose from, so you'll be able to easily create whatever design will fit best with your site. Moreover, this, as well as all the other widgets in the key add-ons collection, can be mixed and matched to your heart's content. That way, you can create attractive and elaborate sections effortlessly. In fact, that's something I'll be doing for this tutorial. I'll be using this last example to showcase the widget's options and functions. We'll start by going over to the back end. And here you can see that I've already prepared the section where I'll be working. The section is divided into two columns, and the left one has a background image. Whereas the right one has an intersection element, we can see what it is when we hover over this tab, and that intersection has two other columns, ready for me to add two instances of the vertical timeline widget. Before we get into that, I just want to explain about the image. I added it as a column background. So if you click here to open the column options, then go to Style, Underneath, you'll find the field where you can upload your background image. Now, I'll open the Elements menu and search for the Vertical Timeline widget. There it is at the bottom. Drag it over to the page. I've set it in my first inner column as I plan on duplicating what I make for the second one. This will save me time as I'll retain any style settings and will only have to adjust the content of the timeline. Alright, in terms of options, this is the Content tab, and we're looking at the general section of the options. The first thing you'll want to deal with here is the date. It's just a text field so you can type in anything you like. For myself, I'll only change the year to 2022. There we go, looking towards the future. Under this, we have two items. They correspond to points on the timeline, so 1 and 2. You can add more simply by clicking here. I'll be sticking with two, so I'll delete this. Once you've determined the number of your items, you can start customizing them. The first field is called Hours. Like the date above, it's a plain text field, so you're free to set whatever you like. For the example I'm making, I'll set a range of hours. OK. Following that, we have the Content field. This is where you can change the paragraph text under the hours. I'll quickly type in the replacement text. Give me a sec. OK, there. Once that's done, you have one final item option, the image. I want to add one, so I'll click here to choose it. And I'll use this from my media library. All right, this is my first item entirely customized. And now I can move on to the second one, where I'll make pretty much the same changes, so let's skip ahead. And here we go. The second one is done as well. That means I can start styling my vertical timeline element. Just a few remarks before we move on. The Content tab has two more sections. The Developer Tools, which when we open it has just this one option. If we switch its setting to Yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, which we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. OK. Then, besides that, we have the Help section. There are no widget options here, only links to some helpful resources, should you need them. Alright, that's it for the first tab. Now we can move on to the Style tab. The first section here is for General Style. The topmost option allows us to set the space between items. By changing the value here, we can change the gap between our items. This here. I'm going to clear this, even though the items are pretty close together, as I plan on using a different option to adjust the spacing later on. Next, we have the Item Side Padding option. By changing that one, we can change the space to the left of the items. This gap here. I'm going to set 50 pixels for that. There. After that, we have the Date Style options. So, they apply to this text here. 
For starters, you can adjust the date margin. This allows you to add more space all around the date. If you don't want to have the same values for all sides, then you can click here to delink the fields and enter different values into them. I'll leave the first two empty and set 10 pixels at the bottom and 50 on the left. And since I set the side padding to 50, now I have the item content aligned with the date. OK. After that, we have the date padding. Like the margin, it lets us add more space around the date if we want to. I won't be making any changes here. In fact, I'll click here to delink the fields as that will set the values to zero. We'll circle back to this a bit later as I want to show you another handy use for this option. OK. Our next option is the date width. It lets us limit how wide the title will be in pixels. I've shortened it now and that forced the text to fall into two rows. I don't think I need this as my content fits neatly enough already. So I'll just clear this. After that, there's the date color. It's exactly what the name suggests, a way of changing the text color. I'll set plain black for this. All right, perfect. Then we have the date typography. It offers a selection of typical typography options, such as the font family. I want to replace the default font, so give me a second to find the one I plan to use. OK, there it is. Then we can change the font size by using this slider or by typing in a new value. I'll set mine to 26 pixels. Next, we have the weight option, where you have this drop-down with a selection of settings to choose from. After that, there's the transform option where we can turn the text to uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or normal. Then with the style option, we can change the text from normal, which is our default, to italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under or through our text. Finally, we have the line height, letter spacing and word spacing if we want to add more space either above and below our text or between our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. After that, we have the date background color. It's very straightforward. You can set any shade you like. And then you can go back to the date padding option. If you increase the padding, you will increase the surface covered by the color. And OK, I'm making changes to individual fields, but this is just to show you that you can get something like this. It's just one idea. But as I don't plan on using a background color, I'll clear these fields. And the color too. All right. Next, we have the content style section. In here, for starters, we can pick whether the content position will be under the hours or next to them on the right. With the second one, your content will look like this. The hours will be on the left and the content on the right. However, for the design I have in mind, I'm going to need the original setting back. There. Then we have the content margin top. This option allows us to add more space above the content, here. So you can separate it a bit from the hours. I'm going to put 4 pixels for this. Alongside this, we have the content padding bottom option. With it, we can add more space under the content and, in essence, separate the items. This option gets us the space here. And it's why I skipped the space between items option, because I could use this now to adjust my item spacing. And for this, I'm going to set 51 pixels. Perfect. Then we have the content color option. It's just what it says, a way to change the color of the content text. And it applies to both items, as you can see. I have a specific color in mind for this, so I'll set its hex code. There. And after that, we have the content typography. By now, we're familiar with the options in here, so I'll only set what I need and we can carry on. Specifically, I'll change the font family to match the one I used under date typography. OK. Then I'll change the font size to 20 pixels. There. And finally, I'll change the line height to pixels. And put 38 as the value here. Now we can see that the content is more spaced out since I changed the line height. And that has pushed the text further apart. Alright, carrying on. The next section of the options is for the hours style. 
So with the options here, we can easily change the color of the hours or whatever other value you set in your timeline. I'm going to set plain black for this. There we go. Then we have another set of typography options. These ones for the hours. Again, I'll quickly make adjustments I need and then we can carry on. So the font family, I want it to match the rest of the text content. There we go. And I'll change the size to match as well. Okay, and that's it. Both for the typography and the hour style section. Next, we have the image style options. The first one lets us set the image proportions. The default setting is original, but you can replace that with any of these here. I'll be keeping original as I uploaded specifically prepared images that work with it, but in a pinch, I could also use the thumbnail setting with my design. See, the change is subtle, but the images still look good within the timeline. Okay, I'll put this back. And under this, we have the image margin bottom option. We can use it to add more space under the image, like so. We can see there's more space here now. I'll set 24 pixels for this. There, perfect. This brings us to the last section of the options, and that is the line and point style. This is where we can make changes to the look of the line connecting the items and the points marking each one in our timeline. So the first option here is for setting the line start position. The default setting is data label. Let me show you what that looks like. There, the line starts at the same height as the element content. So theoretically, it starts at the top of the element. We can change that. Let me show you the other possible setting. It's called first item, and with it, let me show you, the line now starts at the point marking the first item. So it kind of starts at the same height as the image. Okay, I'll click on it now so we get the options back. And down to the line color option. It has this familiar color picker so you can set anything you like. I know the hex code for the color I want, so there. Okay, the frame is making it a bit harder. There, we can see the changed color. And let me get back to the options. The next thing we have is the line thickness. It's very simple. Increase the value to increase the thickness of the line. I'm going to set one pixel for this. Then we have the point type option. The default setting is standard and it gets us this bullet point style look. If you opt to stick with this setting, let me show you the options you have for styling it. For one, we can change the point size. We can see how an increase in value has made the point larger. We also have the point vertical position option, which lets us adjust the position of the points on the line connecting the different items. And finally, we have the point color option. It's simply for changing the color. Now, this was all for the standard setting, but we have other point types we can use. One of those is the line. With this one, we can use a horizontal line instead of a point. Now, the first thing we need to do with this setting is pick a color. Once we've done that, the line becomes visible. Okay, now it looks more like a square than a line, but you can change that. For example, you can use the point width option to stretch the line out and make it look more like a line. Then with the point height, you can adjust the line thickness. And there you have it, a line is an item marker. Besides those, we have two options allowing us to change the line position. The first lets you move the line horizontally, so either left or right. And the second lets you move the line vertically, or up and down. So, as you can see, if you opt for the line, the settings are very straightforward. I'm going to reset them now as I have one more point type to show you. Give me a sec. Okay. So, other than the line, we have one more possibility, and that is the icon. With this, we can upload an icon that would stand in place of the point or line. I'll change its color in a minute, but first, let me set the icon I actually want to use. It's going to be an SVG, and it'll be this one, Insert Media. Okay, and then I'm going to change its color. This option works the same as any other color setting. I'll simply type in the hex code I want. There we go. Perfect. 
And I skipped one option in all of this, the icon size. This was on purpose as I uploaded an SVG with already defined dimensions so I do not need to adjust it. And that's pretty much it for my vertical timeline as this is the design I was going for. It's all there and looking good. And now I'm going to add another timeline to the other column I prepared. Rather than add a brand new one and use the options here to style it, I'll simply click on my existing element and click on duplicate. This will create a copy of my finished timeline with all its style settings already made. Then all I need to do is change the content. And let's skip ahead while I do that. Alright, here we are. My vertical timeline is done. I used two instances of this element in two separate columns, but by duplicating the first, I retained the style settings so they match in looks. The content I wanted is here and everything looks good. Given all of that, I can hit update to save my work. There. Now, in case you need any inspiration when making your own vertical timelines, I invite you to go back to the page we started from. It contains several examples showing different designs, layouts and style solutions you can achieve with this widget. Whether you opt to go for something pared down, like this example here, or to create an elaborate colorful timeline, is up to you. As you've seen, this widget offers numerous options that will help you set up whatever kind of timeline you want. Additionally, you now know how to use all those options and how to make the most of them. So you can get started making your own elements today. Finally, we hope you found this tutorial on the vertical timeline widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin helpful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching.